that. Uh, at any other time, I'd be happy to catch up with you by phone, by email, uh, what have you. Herman is uh, my research associate. He's been working with me for about 10 years now, but he's out of town. Uh, he really gets the credit for putting most of this together. He's become very good at building these types of budgets in Excel. Uh, but this is our first strawberry budget, so please, anything you see that doesn't seem to make sense, uh, we really appreciate the feedback. All right, so what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about this tool. Now, the tool isn't out yet. The very last slide says it's ready. It's almost ready. As Elena said, we need to get some of that harvest information in, as well as a, a few more economic pieces uh, in terms of specific costs in there. Uh, but Herman's contact is at the end of the, um, uh, the presentation, as well as our email for the Center for Ag and Rural Sustainability. Uh, eventually, Elena, I, I expect we'll be putting this up on your website mm -hmm. for download as well. So there'll be lots of opportunities to get it. But as you work through it, or as your growers work through it, um, please give us any feedback you like. So really my goal for today is two things. I want to give you an overview of the pieces that are in this budget and then walk through an example. Now, why we like it is because it's interactive. Uh, production budgets, as you know, are very important to producers, but this is something, as long as they've got Excel loaded on their computer, they can go in, uh, run things based on our data that's uh, from the experimental farm, but they can change anything and everything if it's not appropriate for their particular um, their operation. We've tried to minimize the amount of data that's needed. I practice this stuff on my 82-year-old dad, and I figure if my dad, who knows nothing about strawberries and fruit production, he was a stockbroker his whole life, uh, if he can figure out what's going on, I think we're on the right track. But again, if our terminology is wrong, or if there's something that could be easier, please let us know. And what we'd like is we really call this a true decision support. Now we're economists and we get really into these numbers, um, but we realize that not everybody's gonna wanna use all of the features of this. You know, uh, For a lot of folks, just assessing the costs and revenues is gonna be sufficient, but if they want additional information related to break even and, and the probability of actually attaining a certain revenue, this tool can do that too. All right, uh, the way it's been set up is to look at two different production systems, the high tunnel and the field. Uh, there's lots of different input categories you'll see on the next screen or so, and uh, it's estimating the returns for one year, total costs, total revenues, and net returns. As I said, there's three different types of economic analyses we do, break-even, and we can look at what the break-even yield needs to be, what the break-even price needs to be given certain circumstances. We can look at what if those estimates we put in there for cost, for example, weren't right. What if costs were 10% higher? What if yields were 5% lower? How does that change the results here? And then a risk analysis, and that is, you know, the probability of reaching a certain dollar amount. I need to make $25,000 this year. What's the likelihood, given this stream of costs, given these yields, that I'm going to make that kind of return? So when you open up, this is an Excel-based product. And as far as we know, it works in all versions of Excel. We're doing some uh, extra heavy testing right now in the latest Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft 1413 or 14 that recently came out. Uh, there's macros that make this model work. And uh, if you're familiar with Microsoft Office, sometimes the macros don't transfer very well between versions. So that's what we're trying to make sure everything works well. Uh, but you, the first screen that you'll come to is that it'll ask you, do you want to do a, an estimation for field production or for high tunnel production? And then these are the different input categories. And I know for some of you, you might not be able to see it. There's soil pet prep, planting, irrigation, fertilization, pest management, uh, different environmental modifications that we can show you, uh, high tunnels and harvest information. And when you calculate the budget, you're going to get a bunch of tables, but we also have tried to put some things in, in graphical form. So it's very clear and very easy to see. This is how much I made in revenue, that's how much my costs were, and my net returns are there in the blue. And again, this is for one production year. I, we will talk to, as we go further, it'll make a lot more sense when I go through the example uh, of these break-even points. For economists, we want to know 
uh, what is that uh, point at which uh, costs and benefits are going to be equal? What kind of price do I need to get for my strawberries given a certain yield or given a certain price, what's my yield have to be to make sure that I have at least no loss at the end of the year? And we look at the markets for both fresh and processed berries. And the user, when they go in there, can choose what percentage of their harvest do they expect will be sold in the fresh market at a higher price than in the processed market. Right, so that's basically the question I just mentioned. Uh, given those prices and costs, what yields do I need in order to break even? That's how we define a break even yield. Break even price, given uh, a certain yields, what prices do I need uh, in the fresh and, and processed markets in order to break even at the end of that year? Hopefully we're going to do better than break even, but this tells them the minimum. Questions so far? I'm a Yankee, I tend to talk fast, so if I'm going too fast and I'm on my fourth cup of coffee, just let me know and I can sit down. It's been a busy week in the final, I can tell you. Uh, I like this. Again, geeky economists, we're always asking what if types questions. Uh, if the information we had placed in there doesn't work out exactly the way, suddenly there's a much higher cost on a pesticide than we had predicted ahead of time. Uh, maybe the market price in the, in the fresh market prices have gone up. You know, we can look to see how that is going to change the results in the model. And we like this because it, before you actually put anything in the ground, you can play around and see, okay, you know, if these things happen, if there's a prediction, how is that going to affect me? And the model will calculate those changes for you that quickly. Uh, that's why it, we think it'll be a very useful tool for the growers. <coughs> We have this risk analysis, and as I said, this is kind of complicated. The math underlying it's really complicated, but the concept itself is really simple. What are my chances of reaching a certain targeted dollar amount? Do I have a 10% chance of getting there? Do I have a 90% chance of getting there? And we hope that will give a producer a little more confidence about what he's going forward and doing. Is this really a good idea or is it not? Uh, why we like it? Well, these are our reasons as economists. You know, what we think is giving a producer a tool that will easily help that person decide whether planting strawberries in a given year is a good idea. Okay. Uh, anything else that you think uh, make this tool beneficial or maybe detract from the tool, that's something we want to hear from you. All right, so let's look at an example. Okay, and we're going to look at the strawberry high tunnel production and the field production. I'm not sure which slides, honestly, her mom put in here in the end. Uh, but when you open the tool, this is what it will look like. Now, again, we, um, uh, Elena can tell you, Herman and I, the one thing we fight over is colors. Okay, we've got all the fancy math, but we can't come to agreement on what colors to put something. Um, I have really bad eyes, and uh, some of the colors he chose were very difficult for me to read. So if you see anything, even as minute as a color choice that you don't like, let us know. Uh, there's all sorts of, on the main screen, all of these things are down here, quick little buttons that you can click on that tell you a little bit about what this tool does. Credits are who helped us put this thing together. The, this disclaimer basically saying don't look at this tool alone, uh, but it can be a good help. Uh, how to contact us. We have a full user's guide that we've put together in a PDF format. Uh, that has lots of pictures in it that walks through the steps of how to use the calculator. But then we have a quick start thing that basically says if you want to run a demonstration of how this goes, here are the five easy steps you need to do. And then when you're ready to actually use the tool, you would push into the user input button. So here again, as we said, is uh, the button for the user's guide and that's what it looks like. And it, it will be attached as a PDF uh, to the model that you can read either on the screen or download for yourself. And there are the quick start menu items that basically just gave a very, very short uh, description of what it takes to make this model run the default case. Assuming you accept our prices, our yield estimates, our breakdown for, between um, the process and the fresh market, it'll calculate some numbers for you. Okay, <clears throat> so the model will ask you, uh, do you want to estimate a budget for field or high tunnel? And the questions are similar, but as you can imagine, they're not exactly the same. 
Uh, if you start with the field production model, this is what will come up. And underneath where all these arrows are, Herman has given a range of values that can go in there. Now, if you look through them and you think that range is not broad enough or perhaps too broad, let us know. But we looked in terms of, um, especially when it gets over to the prices, what the prices have been historically in the South uh, for strawberries. So, you know, again, any kind of input you want to give for that. Um, planning density information, cultivar name, you can add your own if it's not listed there. Uh, and this is for the field production. How many plants, um, how, what their percentage usage is. We run this for a default of one acre. Okay, so we know that producers won't do a full acre uh, in some cases of strawberries, or they may do multiple ones, but they have to understand that this, is, um, this estimation is based on one acre of production. If you had chosen instead uh, the high tunnel, you get basically the same information, except now we have some information about the tunnel itself. And really, once you put that information in there, if you want to assume uh, our prices, you just hit the run button and automatically the budget will give you some information. Okay. So what kind of information are we given? If this is the high tunnel, that's going to tell you the revenues, the costs, the net returns, uh, what the prices are, okay, and what the yields are, what we expect them to be given this estimation of the budget. The break even, again, um, what prices we need to get to get break, to break even or what type of yield we need to get to break even. And it takes it down into splitting up uh, the revenues we've gotten from the different markets as well as the individual <laughs> costs that year. Okay? And again, the graphical format to show in this particular case, costs and revenues were very close to each other, so net returns were pretty small. Now. You can click on any of these buttons. If you notice right there along the top, that red line, that's these buttons here. Okay. And you can click on any one of them to see what kind of information went in to make this estimate that showed up on this last page. So Can let you something? Sure. I keep seeing the word organic, mm -hmm. and this is not just for organic production. Okay. 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 That's one. So I'm going to think that I mean to tell Herman, and I have forgotten okay. to tell him. Okay. So this is not for necessarily organic production. We're going to be putting some information there on organic pesticides, but that's not, um, you know, that's one of the things I need to tell him to take out. Sure, we can make sure that yeah. happens. And, and, and Elaine is right. I mean, it, it can be the inputs that you put in here can be changed dramatically for any type of production system you want. So if, it, if you want it to be organic, it can estimate organic. If it's conventional, it can estimate conventional. So you can change the density of your planting as well then? Yes. Okay. Yes. All those things on the front page that had the little arrow, one of them was planting density, they can change. Okay, and as I said, if I'd, have, uh, I'd love it if um, when we get a, a demo of this out, for you to look at those ranges we've put in there to see if the, you know, the planting density ranges that we put in seem to make sense or are they way out there. Okay. Can you sure. change the acreage? Like, can you like put like point six in there, or do you? Right it now, for an acre? yeah. Right now, it's for one acre, okay. and you know, and that's something we need to make clear. The complete the the macros to make that change, believe it or not, are really really complicated to break that down. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something we're hoping to be able to do, maybe in version two. Okay. okay this is version one, and. Um, again, if we can get some uh, ideas from you as to what, what are we seeing around here, how big is the acreage of strawberry production, that can help us out a lot. So, for ex yeah. Go, go back with her question. It, so, if it's all on the unit of one acre and I've got less than that, one-tenth uh -huh. of an acre, all I have to do is multiply by one-tenth, supposedly, to Supposedly, that won't be exactly, for your variable costs and for your revenues, that would be accurate. Okay. Okay. But for the fixed costs, you know, because we're assuming, for example, if you're doing a tunnel, that the tunnel is going to be over most of that one acre. And clearly, your tunnel, um, your tunnel costs can't be broken up proportionally easily like that. So those are some of the things we're trying to work through right now. Can you give us a ballpark? Yeah. Right, and, and that's all this is really supposed to be, is a ballpark. Okay. That's our big disclaimer on the front, okay? So, for example, 
This is what, uh, based on um, <coughs> some estimates that we got from one of the tunnel companies, okay, what we would expect for a tunnel. If you don't like this, you can go in and anywhere there's that circle, you can change the quantity of these uh, inputs used or the price or both. So Herman went in and just made it up. These are not expected to be good changes. Just to give you an example, if you didn't like those 74 units, you could change them to 80. And if you didn't like those prices, they maybe they were too low for you, you could uh, increase them. And that will give you, if you look down here, we had a cost of 25.68. And as soon as you put in that new information, it'll automatically recalculate that cost for you. So again, it gives you an opportunity to play with things. And then you can compare what your overall returns were before you made those changes and after. Now, when we first ran the model, given the default information, net returns were 62.45. Because we increased costs, those net returns fell. Okay, so it gives you an, uh, an ability to look at these things and understand better how things would change. Questions about that? And you can do that in any one of these tabs. I haven't shown you all of the information under there, but just like you saw for high tunnel, there's all sorts of details about what activities happen in the soil prep year. Maybe you do them, maybe you don't. If you don't, you can zero them out. If you do other things, you can add them to it. Same with every one of those, those deals. So the default information is what's happening in a, or, um, Elena's plots, okay? Or for some information we're getting uh, from uh, some of the folks that Elena is working with. Uh, so we don't expect them to be representative of what's happening on every farm, okay? But it's a, it's a starting point and it's very easy for a user to change them. Okay, so this is what I said gets a little bit more complicated because we're dealing with two different types of prices because we have the fresh market price and the process market price. Uh, but you can click on a break even analysis icon and it'll walk you through uh, break even prices and uh, yields. Now, this screen looks a mess. Uh, I fully appreciate that this is a very complicated screen. And so if anybody has any ideas of how we can streamline this, I mean, for an economist, it makes a lot of sense. I gave it to my dad, who's very sharp in economics, and he said, no. That was his only word, was no. He didn't like it. And I said, okay, I'm with you, dad, but um, help me come up with a better approach. So if, you, if, if something hits you, please be sure to let us know. But basically, these things in black are telling us what those break-even yields and costs would be under this system. So, for example, if you knew, you know, if that fresh yield at 20,000, a little over almost 21,000 pounds, that tells you, you know, if you have an idea historically from your fields, whether or not you can make that kind of yield, this will tell you whether or not you have a chance of breaking even. That is not losing money at the end of the production year. Same with the price. If, if given certain yields you're expecting, uh, here's what it's telling you the fresh market price has to be per pound in order for you to break even again. Yeah? Could you not just break that up among multiple screens? We could. You think that would be preferable? Better than a busy screen like that. Okay. I think it wouldn't be so overwhelming. So if we put perhaps a break even yield on its one page and the break even price on the other? Yeah. Like that better? Okay. Okay. Or you could just have that one and then quads or something like that. You can go to a screen. Okay. Yeah, I mean. to a certain spot. All right, that, I appreciate that. But it's, simplifying is, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, well, we'll I'll get him to play with that and see what he can do. Yes, ma'am. Not, not about the break even part, but what I was just uh, realizing is for people who don't use a computer a lot, and everybody may, I don't know, but really it's sort of like getting your new car kind of worked out once you get your information in this the second year all you have to do are just make the little changes that you're aware of because right. it's already set up that's right that that's right yeah if you save the if you save the file with your changes absolutely you can uh, but this screen of all of the screens we have in this model and we have this across other budgets we're doing this is the one i'm least happy with so i do appreciate that um that input to try to simplify that 
All right, so now the next thing that we can do, uh, uh, and again, nobody, you don't have to look at that break even. You don't have to look at the sensitivity analysis if they don't want you. That's what I like about this model. You can keep it simple and just look at your costs and revenues, but here are other things we can do. So what if, for example, we wanted to see what happened if yields were higher than I expected or um, the price, the market price for the fresh market was higher than I had put in there initially. Uh, now these will not show up on the same screen. These are two screens that are being uh, shown on the same slide. Okay. But it will show you, um, for example, what's happened to uh, the revenues, costs, and returns when I made those changes. So you run the model the first time and you see that you've got your net returns of $6,000. But if you increased that yield from one and a half to 1.75, you can see that that means given everything else staying the same, nothing else changing but what I expected in uh, the yield, my returns will go up almost double. Okay. Right, so a sensitivity analysis allows you to do one change at a time. Okay. Uh, here again, if we wanted to change around uh, what that, um, uh, well, I mean, you have to change prices or yield usually at once at a time. It's going to be easier to uh, determine where that difference is coming from. But here we've changed uh, the percentage of our fruit that goes to the fresh market. We've reduced it. Okay? And we've also changed the fresh market price. That's actually gone up while the percentage that we're giving to the fresh market's gone down. So you can have all these different kind of combinations going on. And again, we see we started with that $6,000 return. This one's changed it slightly, made it go up just a little bit. But again, it, it's, it's a nice little tool that you can slide back and forth. This is actually a sliding bar uh, to see if, uh, you know, what percentages you want and what prices you want and see how things change. And it will change as you slide this, this screen will change in front of your eyes. Okay, so you can watch it going up and down, which is kind of cool. My kids like that. It's a real family affair in my house. We all get involved in this. Uh, mom's work definitely comes home with her. And then the final bit is the risk analysis. And this, uh, I'm still testing this to make sure that the math and the macros are working really well. But again, I think it's a really nice tool that allows a producer, given certain information that they know, okay, most likely I expect to get a pound and a half of yield per plant and the prices of 269 and 75 cents are what I expect the price, okay? But if you can give some kind of range, you know, okay, most likely I'm gonna get a pound and a half, but I'm 99% sure I'm not gonna get less than three quarters of a pound. And at best, I could get two pounds, right? So a user would specify what these pieces are, okay? And again, what the breakdown is in terms of what's going to the fresh market okay, and to the processed market. Okay. And this is a target. How much money do you want to make when it's all said and done? Okay. And you're not going to change any of the costs. In this example, this says I'm not changing any of the cost estimates that I already ran. Okay, so you can make very complicated changes using this tool, or you can make very simple changes using your tool. Okay. All right, so we're going to have a baseline scenario. This is what we thought at first. And the one thing that we're going to change in there is what our minimum yield and maximum yield could possibly be. Okay. Somebody wants to look at this. Initially, what it will do, and uh, this is what we call in economics, you might remember these things, cumulative density functions. Okay. And the rule with the cumulative density function is anything to the right is better. When you move to the left, you're worse off. When you move to the right, you're better off. So moving to the right says you have a higher likelihood of doing better. So the first scenario will give you the baseline under what we've put on there. This is the likelihood of the range of, of yields that you're gonna get. And the way this, uh, this shows is that at 100% of all your activities, uh, there's a 99% chance or 95% chance that your true earnings are going to be between 740 and uh, 2128. So that's well short of that $10,000 market. Okay, get, just given the numbers that were thrown in here. Now, if we've changed that yield, 
The red line is still our initial scenario, but the blue line shows us what happens when we made those changes. So this blue line can end up anywhere, depending on what kind of changes you decide to do. But now it's telling us there's a 95% chance that the money we're gonna make based on those changes is between 11 and $12,000. So if we had a target of $10,000, there's a 95% chance that we're gonna exceed it. So that's again, uh, for planning purposes to give an idea of where we're likely to show up. Okay. So there's a lot of information in this tool, we realize it. And some of it may be very useful from a grower's perspective, but some of it may not. Uh, lots of it is very useful from a researcher's perspective, but some of it may not be. So we're trying to build a balance to make sure that uh, we have a tool that can be used by different types of people for different purposes. We've tried to make it simple, user-friendly. Uh, we know not everyone does use a computer, but we do know that Excel has become adopted more and more by a lot of ag producers. So any, again, you guys are much closer to the producers than I am, so any kind of thoughts you have that is gonna make this tool easier to be used uh, will be helpful. Uh, when the tool is ready, it is, it's almost ready, once we get a couple of those pieces of information in, and I am gonna ask Herman to see if he can split up that break-even screen. And then we'll see how, I'm not sure how long that will take him to do. It shouldn't take him too long. But you'll be able to get a copy of the tool a couple of ways. You can shoot an email directly to Herman, and it's in your presentation there, uh, or to me. And eventually, as we say, when it's ready, uh, we'll ask Elena to put a link to it from her webpage. We're also willing to make CD copies uh, to mail out. So if you want some CD copies for your offices so that you can hand them out, we're happy to do that too. Just let me know and we'll do it. And I have a couple extra copies of the presentation for those of you that I didn't reach when you first came in. Um, and that was my presentation for today. So thanks for your time, I appreciate it. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to thank you for producing this. I've worked on similar type spreadsheets in the construction industry. And you know, a few people haven't done this, you have no idea what it took to produce this. I appreciate that understanding. Herman would appreciate that, believe me. Yeah. And it will be extremely helpful to the world once they get used to it. Well, and once, uh, I don't know if, if Elaine has mentioned this yet or not, but this is actually our fourth in a series of tools we're working on. Uh, the, we have one for Apple production that's completely finished. Um, we're revising ones we have for raspberries and blackberries. Uh, it'll, it'll be very similar to this except multi-year, of course. And uh, we're also adding blueberries. So hopefully by fall, uh, we'll have raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries out. I was hoping to have them out by now, but we're not there yet. <laughs> I guess I'd like to make a comment. I mentioned yesterday about farmers being notoriously bad about selling stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way you're apologetic about computers. Right. But, you know, this is 2014. Mm -hmm. And, you know, farmers should have tractors now. Mm -hmm. They still want to dig with the shovel, <laughs> it's okay. And they, they need to get with this. Now, I, and I'm saying this, I consider myself a computer dunce. Okay. And I'm a little personal. I took computer a computer class, 500 points cost of it. You had to get 60% to pass. 300 points. I got 300.8. <laughs> D for done. <clears throat> no, I've come back to college and the secretaries don't put signs up saying I type, you know, essays. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do it myself if I don't, I'm a cheater. But you, you guys really need to get into this and it is a game in a way, but it's mm -hmm. with money. Sure. And looking at the variables and I'm thinking, I, I got dairy in my mind and feed is the biggest expense. <coughs> And I don't know what your biggest expense is, but let's just say it's energy. If I can drop that 1% or 2% and plug that number in, what does that do over here? Exactly. And I, that's what you're saying. Exactly. That's exactly, you can do that. You can yeah. you can pick and choose what you want to change. Anything that's in, entered in as an input can be adjusted. But you're part of it, and it goes back to the, the selling. If I wholesale these at 75 cents, versus I deliver gourmet quality 
at two and a half dollars or four dollars. Right. Minor organic, very special, okay. blah blah blah, right. they're worth four dollars. Mm -hmm. That changes the thing as you say, it moves Absolutely. it to the right. Absolutely. And you can look at all of those scenarios with this tool. Yeah, I, I, I think that's just fantastic. A little bit of you know, one of my teachers said, a little bit of commode time here, folks, and you, you could really put in the profits or just say, I can't do that, I'm not going to do it. Might be a good hobby where I can put money in and lose it, but I'm trying to make money. Great. Well, and if, if any of you are willing to be guinea pigs for us, to really look through it, I'm, I, you're so much closer to the strawberry production market than I am. And uh, I really want to make sure that we haven't missed the mark. So anybody who's willing to test it, please let me know. I, we could really use uh, a good set of uh, expert eyes on this beyond, you know, I think we've got the math right, and I think we've got the macros right, but content-wise, the more eyes that look at it, the better off we're going to be. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about this project, um, what is going to be generated, because yeah, knowing the economics of any of the system is really important. All the inputs that we're putting in there, different ways of growing tunnels outside, um, and even in, in organic, so right. we're going to be able to do all that in, in this tool. So. Appreciate Jenny working sure. so hard on this and, and, and her mom. mom. He gets. I'm here to present. He gets. He's still been the real uh, worker on this process. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to get word to us agents when all these tools are done? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We'll be sure to make sure we get. Um, uh, I'll run it through Elena, uh, and as I said, any of you can contact me at any time, and we'll make sure that you have access to all of them. Uh, you're our, you're our, our, our best hope at getting this out to the growers. So. Absolutely. I really also think, for example, the blackberry and raspberry budget, those are going to be really important. Yeah, I yeah. can use yeah. I can use all three of them right, right. now. Mm -hmm. How well, much stretch would it be to apply this to vegetables? Say tomatoes would be a big, uh, potentially big crop. Theoretically, it could be applied to anything. It's um, it's time and manpower. That's the, that's the real constraint. When we were in um, up in Missouri in uh, January, Elena and I were up at a, a conference there. Um, forget the gentleman's name, who was the extension agent up there who was in our room when we were presenting from Missouri. Was it uh, Patrick? Might have been. It was, I had just met him that day. Mm -hmm. But apparently Missouri is doing a lot on the vegetable side. And what we're hoping to do is partner with them because they're not doing any of the fruit. And again, given a shortage of manpower and a lot of very similar growing conditions, you know, from here in southern Missouri, if we can get their vegetable uh, budgets down to us and our fruit budgets up to them, that's great. That would be a big help to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And uh, they, they're also working on interactive budgets, but theirs don't include all the what if and break even at this point. Uh, but we're going to work together to try to bring all of them. You know, uh, we, we have no, we don't feel real ownership in this. We're proud of the process, but uh, we really want to see it spread out, get everybody involved so that we're providing the best materials we can uh, in the region. So that's our plan. Uh, it would be helpful to me to know, um, like you said, tomatoes is important. You know, what are the priority crops? I don't know. Pumpkins. Pumpkins. In North Arkansas. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the macros that underlie this, I guess kind of his question, are <coughs> the same macros functional <coughs> for enterprises? I would think that the same macros would be functional. It's just kind of the input data, the way they're structured, yeah. or not necessarily. Yes and no. Some of them will be. Um, you know, uh, clearly the the macros that work for the annual crops will be more similar than those for the perennials. Yeah. Um, so you know, our fruit bushes and, and apple trees we're doing very differently. Yeah. Um, but it shouldn't be that much of a leap to try to uh, change the annual crops for the pumpkins, the strawberries, the tomatoes. That's sort of thing. Yeah. Just to echo what Mike was saying and follow up to make sure that it gets the word gets out to us. He's been at this longer than I have, but there's a disconnect between what goes on here and what gets to us sometimes okay. in the field. And well, you've got my word on it. I mean, I'll make sure as soon as it's ready, we'll get an email yeah. out to all the counties. And, and you're already uh, doing your website, right? What yes, so yes. That's, we are in, uh, that's going to be very helpful too. Once that is up and running at this point, honestly, it's not worth looking at. It's a mess. Uh, but we're uh, the Center for Ag and Rural Sustainability, where all these things will be eventually housed. Uh, we've got students working on a, a redo, and we should be unveiling the new website uh, mid-July. And so we'll make sure you know exactly where to go find these things on that website. Well, ultimately, this 
in our job, this is where rubber meets the road. Okay. And you can want to do this or that, but if you don't have the tools to do an economic analysis, then that's right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that's my bias, obviously, being an economist, but I, I need your help. I need you guys to work with me and make sure that this tool is appropriate. So if a couple of you can volunteer for me to send this out before we do a real release, just to make sure our bounds on our inputs make sense, uh, that would be really helpful to me. So think about it. Talk to Elena. Let me know who's, who's willing. Um, because the tool is only going to be as good as the inputs are that are in there. So. Well, we've been trying to give uh, Herman all the inputs, right. but again, we sit down every so often and go over this and, you know, we start going like, the scholars, the scholars, right, right. <laughs> almost <laughs> the main thing that shows up. That, you yeah. know, so we end up changing things, but yeah, yeah. But like I said, it's the ranges know. that I'm worried about, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, because he's planted, you know, they're, they're fixed. You can't go any lower or any higher than he's put in there. And that's, again, for the macros and to make the tool work, it, it makes sense to set it up that way. Just make sure our range is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this is strawberries. Are you far enough with the blueberries and the raspberry blackberries where we, we have growers that would be interested in reviewing those? No, we're not. They're okay. neck. The res we have, uh, and, I, and honestly, I don't want to share them because they're so old and we've made so many improvements. We had raspberry and blackberry ones out before. Mm -hmm. uh, once this is done, they will be done next, and the blueberries will be last. Uh, the blueberries are a student project, so that's needs a little more. Well, that's ready to go. <laughs> Apples your, is out there. What's your yes. target day on having those completed? <laughs> Herman will kill me if I, if I give an actual date. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it's probably midsummer, mid to late summer is what I think there's. Nothing on peaches. Nothing on peaches. If you do something, let me know. We've got 300 acres of peaches. Okay. Okay. Yeah, again, that should be able to um, fall from the apple budget. Uh, but we need help understanding that production process to make sure that we are putting it in there properly. So your dad and had a boy too. You know, I, I, I'm thinking here uh, that, that I remember some kind of a quote by our Napoleon or about Napoleon that before he sent any messages out to his generals, mm -hmm. he would write them out and he gave them to a sergeant who was not noted for his brain power. <laughs> and he would say, tell me what that says. And if the sergeant didn't understand, mm -hmm. he would rewrite it. Until so that the general did not misunderstand. Right. And I, I think it's good that you're doing this mm -hmm. because you're an economist. Right. You know, you're I a pointy understand. Head. I understand. You're a pointy Communication head. can be difficult. Yeah. You know, you said, you know, the, the, the tires meet the road. Right. And there's, there's been a real problem, I think, a lot of times there's been a problem. Well, let's change it today. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm very willing to make that happen. Her mom is too. So we just need you guys to partner with us and it will be, um, it can be a really good set of tools out there. Well, he, he's asking about peaches, you know, mm -hmm. th and you're going to coordinate with Missouri, mm -hmm. but you're not doing peaches, but yep. what about Georgia? You know, you got the southern region, yep. whatever, and letting them know what you're doing. They might already have budgets. They might already. Yes, yeah. they might. That's, and again, that's... Does um, it transfer? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And once we've got our our website open and, you know, uh, we want to link to all of these other things, you know, hopefully that'll happen. Again, if you find things out there that are appropriate like that, if you stumble across a pumpkin budget, you know, let us know, yeah. um, you know. Um, but, you know, this the entire team, the workforce on this is Ron and me, and this is one of about a hundred other things we're working on so any assistance you can get us is no more coffee breaks yeah. <laughs> yeah why do you think i'm on my fourth cup already <laughs> did somebody else have a question yeah once you have all your information put in there do you just save it and you can open it back up and yes. like type back into it yes you can you sorry i didn't say that you can you can uh, just close it out and not save anything or you can actually save it and it'll have the last bit of stuff you have in there um it won't be in this version uh, because it's very complicated, uh, but in another, ver the next version, one of the things we want to be able to do is build in a safe scenario case so that you can build lots of different scenarios and you can have your high tunnel one and your and your field one and this variety and that cultivar and that sort of deal. But um, it's, a, as I said, it's a work in progress. If we can get all the kinks out of this one, it makes making those types of changes 
uh, go forth a lot smoother. Well, we, David was talking yesterday, and he's talking about getting uh, blossoms frozen. And th this is kind of what you're talking about, that, okay, I'm expecting X pounds, but I lost five blossoms. You know, he has to do a change to see mm -hmm. projected what I'm going to make this year. Exactly. Do I want to carry through this year? That's right. Do I plow them under because I'll right. lose less money or what? Right. And, you know, but the key is, again, that disclaimer is very important to us. It's a tool. It's only going to be as good as the inputs that go in it. And we don't want any producer making all of their decisions just based on what they plug into this calculator. Uh, so let's, let's help me get the word out that it is a tool to assist, not uh, to make final decisions. Yet. So do you think this would be uh, web driven at some point? I'm just thinking, you know, like Tax Act. I don't have to think about all the algorithms that have been changed in this last right. year and how it affects my decisions. Um, but it, but but this would require when you do an update, we have to get new software. That's right. But do you think you it, it can be web driven and, and you manage it from the back door? Or it how, could be. How will we sustain that? Uh, well, that's the, the, you know we're funding is as you know always yeah. an issue and priority. So um, help us with extension leadership that if you guys identify this is a priority and something that has to happen uh, that should happen hopefully that could happen uh, ideally we would want it on the website like that so prices can be automatically updated every year yeah. uh, and inputs can the way some of the other budgets are but yeah. um, that's honestly out of my hands yeah. um, you know it's uh, this is something that Herman and I have gotten involved in all of these tools uh, we're full we're hundred percent well I should say we're zero percent extension we're zero percent outreach but we see how important that is yeah. and so um, well, help us row crop analysis like rice rice board it that works kind of more than likely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, we don't have any but you know you know most budgets there's a lot of budgets everywhere but there's few <coughs> that have interactive sensitivity exactly. analysis components. Exactly. so that's a really powerful tool yeah and you know honestly to give i wish her mom was here to take all the credit because he really deserves it um the row crop budgets that have eventually have now become interactive it's all because of some early row crop work that her mom did uh, we really saw the importance of this uh, uh, since uh, producers are becoming more and more computer literate, and I am too through this process, so it's, it's real. Well, Speaking I know that, you have a yeah. I just really, really quick. Is it suitable for these two? Not the right now. Okay. Not right now. Um, this is this is version one. Right. And uh, the other problem um, that I'm running into, I'm, I'm doing something similar in pork <laughs> with greenhouse gases and and costs uh, for the pork industry. And we've got a great tool out there, but we're finding, uh, I tried to use it in one of my classes this year, and two thirds of my students have Macs, and it's a disaster on a Mac. Not everything works well. So, um, uh, you know, Microsoft and, and um, iOS don't get along yet as well as they should. So, hopefully, as things move forward, we'll be able to expand this. But tell us what we need, tell us where to put our energy and effort. Uh, you know that better than we do, and then we'll do our best to make it happen. All right, well, thanks for your time today. Thank I appreciate you very it. Much. I'm sorry I have to leave. I'm going to get the final. <laughs> okay. Our next speaker is. Uh, uh,